In section 4.1, we learned about R, which is the correlation coefficient. That's a numerical measure of the strength and direction of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. Now remember, you have options for strength. Strength could be no relation at all. It could be, right, now, no linear relation, I should say. It could be a weak relationship. It could be a moderate relationship, a strong relationship, or a perfect relationship. And the relationship could be positive if your R value is positive or negative if your R value is negative. And that's wonderful stuff. It's, it's great to be able to have a numerical measure for the strength and direction of our linear relations. We want to take it one step further and kind of expand upon the interpretation that we can give to this correlation coefficient. But the trouble is we can't do it directly. And that's where section 4.3 comes in, the coefficient of determination. So the interpretation for R doesn't quite work out. So what we do is we square R. We make it R squared. Now this is still a numerical measure, because if R was a number, R squared is still a number, that measures the strength of the linear relationship at two quantitative variables. Because R did, so does R squared. However, it has an interpretation piece to it that R doesn't have. Namely, that R squared measures the proportion of total variation in the response variable that is explained by the least squares regression line. Boy, that's a mouthful. So let me talk about that just a little bit. If you look at the next page just for a second, you can see in here we have the points kind of hovering around this line. They don't perfectly match it. Down here on this line, they perfectly match it, right? exactly like what we'd like. But up here on A, not so much. What we would like is that regression line to explain everything that we see going on. But unless it's a perfect relationship, it can't. So the regression line explains everything for C, but not for A or not for B or D, right? Then R squared tells us what percentage of the variability, the up and down, right, of the Y variables is explained by that line. So what's being accounted for by the line and what stuff that we just don't really understand why it's happening. That's what R squared measures for us. Let me flip back here. So some other things to note about R squared. One, we will never, never, never find R squared by hand because we're not crazy people. We will make a computer or a calculator do this for us. Instead, um, in particular, we will use linear regression on the TI-84 calculator, or we might read some computer output. Now, R squared is the square of the correlation coefficient. Since the correlation coefficient was restricted between negative 1 and 1, that means R squared is restricted between 0 and 1, because it can never be negative. It always has to be between 0 and 1. Um, R squared does not measure the direction of relation. It doesn't tell you whether it's going positive or negative. It only tells you its strength and what proportion of the variability, the total variation in the response variable, is explained by the line. Just like with R, R squared is not a guarantee of a linear relationship. Even if you have a really strong value, it doesn't mean you for sure have a linear relation. For more on that, you'd have to study chapter 14. And then R squared is sort of like the variance. It, it gets used more in upper level statistics. So in, in starter classes, we use R a lot. And then in higher level courses, we tend to use R squared a lot. Same thing with variance and standard deviation. In, in lower level courses, we tend to use standard deviation. Then when we get to the higher level stuff, we tend to use variance because variance is a little bit easier to work with. That's true also of R as well and R squared. All right, so how do we interpret R squared? Well, it's the same numbers that you had before, but they're squared. So if I flip back real quick, let me pause and go back to that page. If we look here, this was the relationship for R, and we can see the numbers. The numbers that, that separated weak were 0.3 and 0.5, and then 0.5 to 0.8, right? So if you square 0.3, let me bring up a calculator real quick, clear it out. 0.3 squared is 0.09, and 0.5 squared is 0.25, and 0.8 squared is 0.64. Okay? And those numbers are what we're using in 4.3, oops, I just flipped past it. Sorry, there it is. In 4.3, we're using those numbers here. So 0.3 squared gets you the 0.09, and then 0.5 makes the 0.25, and then the 0.09, and so on. So it's the same relationships we were seeing with R, but all the numbers were squared. So I have a diagram here um, 
so 0 to about 0 0.09, that's the no linear relation, and then the pink zone, that's the weak relation, that's 0 0.09 to 0 0.25. Then moderate's quite large, it's 0 0.09, or 0.25, excuse me, all the way up to 0.64, but not including 0.64. And then 0.64, that red dot, that's where the strong relationship goes, and it goes all the way up to the black dot. The black dot is r equals 1, that's a perfect linear relation. All right, so now let's see r squared in practice. These are the exact same graphs that we had back in section 4.1 when we were looking at the correlation coefficient. And we have to determine which ones have values of 0 0.01, 0 0.19, 0 0.35, 0 0.69, 0 0.90, and 1. Well, 1 is really easy. This one is 1 for C, and this one is 1 for F. That's the, that's the easy part, because they're perfect linear relationships. So they're exactly ideal. Now, let's see. The strongest number we have is 0.9. So let's look here. 0.9, the strongest relation, that's this letter B. So that's got to be 0.9. Now, notice it's negative, but that doesn't matter, right? Even though it's negative, r squared is always positive. r does not give us direction, it only gives us strength. How strong is this relation? And this is very strong. Um, by the same token, we should be able to figure out the weakest relation. The worst one out here, oh, that's g. So this is 0.01. That's pretty terrible. If you didn't have that line in there, you wouldn't even guess that it's linear. It looks like just a big blob of points. All right, now that leaves us all these other ones. This one's really be the best of the three that are remaining. A, it's A, D, and E, and A is the best. So A has got to be 0 0.69 for your R squared. And that leaves D and E. One of these is 0.35, and one of these is 0.19. So let's look at them real quick. All right, so if we look at this, E has got a stronger kind of trend here. You can kind of see that upward mobility for E. So this one is 0 0.35, the stronger of the two numbers. And this one has a bit of a downward trend, but it's a little bit less pronounced than E. So I'm going to give that one the 0 0.19. It's not a great relationship. Neither one of those is that great. All right, so we're all done with that. Besides the perfect relationships, which graph shows the strongest relationship? That would be B. Right, so B has um, strongest relation, and it's the R squared the value, R squared value. My math type didn't show up there. There we go. R squared is the highest. And just for our own benefit, let's interpret that value real quick. So the interpretation would be that 90%, so in graph B, in graph B, ninety percent of the variability in Y, the Y variable. is explained by the linear regression line. Linear model, how about that? I guess a linear regression model, or the line of best fit, whatever you want to call it. All right, we're all done with that problem. And I know I didn't ask the interpretation question, but it's a good thing to practice knowing how to do. All right, so now let's look here. As part of a larger study, Speed and Gangestad, I'm sorry, I can't say that name, Gangestad, collected ratings and nominations on a number of characteristics for 66 fraternity men and from their fellow fraternity members. The following paragraph is taken from the results section. So it said men's romantic popularity correlated with several statistics. Most outgoing had R squared of 0.47. Best dressed had R squared of 0.48. Most physically attractive had R squared of 0.43. Most self-confidence had R squared of 0.44. And funniest had an R squared value of 0.37. Unexpectedly, however, men's potential for financial success did not significantly correlate with romantic popularity. The R squared was equal to 0.10. All right, so which trait appears to show the strongest relationship with romantic success? Well, that would be the best dressed part because best dressed has the highest, 
plus dressed because the R squared value, which was 0 0.48, is highest. Why does the study say that financial success was not significant? Well, the R squared value was only 0 0.10, which is very, very weak. Matter of fact, let's go back and look at our table here. 0 0.10 is just on the verge of being no relation at all. So it's on the low end, the very, very low end of the weak zone. This is very weak, almost to the no linear relation zone, right? I'll just say that, right? So very, very low value. All right, now we know how to interpret R squared. Let's see if we can find R squared with our calculator. So I'm going to grab my calculator. Oops, actually, I'm going to make my calculator go away, and I'll be right back with that. One second. Actually, my computer program is being very strange, so I'm going to stop the video right here, and I'll pick up back here with finding the coefficient of determination in the next video. I'll see you back there, here then.